Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our College and Career Planning Night. Um, this evening, we are going to provide you with information as it relates to um, post-secondary planning. Uh, generally, we like to say focus on our juniors on this evening but and their parents, but we also know that we have other families, 9th, 10th, 11th graders, uh, ninth and 10th graders who are on with us also. But we wanna give you a general overview of what to expect throughout the college, uh, the, uh, college and career planning um, courses, uh, the importance of selecting um, certain courses, um, and just uh, the whole process. Um, we talk about um, the, um, at the standardized tests. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the college application process, but just providing you with a general inter overview so that when you leave here this evening, hopefully there is some clarity for you and your, if it's a parent and if it's a student, you to really understand what you need to know throughout the entire college, pro the college application process. So at this time, we're going to show a 20, about a 25 minute uh, video that will give you that general overview. Throughout the video, please feel free to ask any questions. You can post the questions in the Q&A and we will be available to answer those questions throughout. Once the video is over, we will still be available to answer any questions that um, you may have. Continue to um, write them in the Q&A and we will answer them throughout the session. Thank you. And thank you for coming out this evening. Welcome to the College and Career Night hosted by West Orange High School Counseling Department. Thank you for joining us as tonight's video presentation is going to provide you with a lot of important information. We kindly ask if you have any questions throughout the presentation to please type them in the Q&A. These questions will be answered by the school counselors at the conclusion of the presentation. Tonight's agenda includes a PSAT overview, post-secondary options, the college application process, and financial aid and scholarships. In the month of December, all 11th grade students were provided with an essential guide to junior year. Students were informed that this is the last year to improve upon their GPA and encouraged to finish out the remainder of the year strong. In addition, information was provided about standardized testing for this spring, beginning the college search process, and the importance of updating their activities resume in Navion. This October, all juniors were given the opportunity to take the PSAT at West Orange High School. The PSAT is a practice test that can help students identify their strengths and weaknesses prior to taking the SAT this spring. In addition, all 11th graders who took the PSAT in their junior year may qualify for the National Merit Scholarship Corporation programs. Anyone that took the PSAT this October should have received their score report via email directly from College Board in early December. On this slide, we also provide a link to a brief video to help you understand your PSAT scores. In addition, College Board and Khan Academy have partnered up to allow students the ability to upload their PSAT results to Khan Academy for a personalized study plan. If you did not take the PSAT, there is no need to worry as you can still use Khan Academy to take free diagnostic quizzes in both math and reading and writing. These quizzes will help figure out what you already know and what you need to work on. With this information, the system can craft an ideal practice plan for you. Upon graduation, students have a variety of options for after high school. They can enroll in a two or four year degree program at a college or university, or attend a technical or apprenticeship program. Students can also choose to join a branch of the military or go out directly into the world of work. If you plan on starting at a community college, New Jersey Transfer is a website that assists students in transferring courses from New Jersey's 18 community colleges to the 25 participating four-year institutions in the state. Included on this slide are links to information 
on the different military academies and trade schools in New Jersey. If you are planning on attending college, beginning your college search early means you will have a better understanding of the college's admission requirements and programs offered. In addition to the financial costs and the various ways to fund your education. Campus visits and open houses are very important as well as they allow you to experience the college in person. We highly recommend students go to visit schools that they have an interest in. Although this is one of the most time consuming steps in the process, it is probably one of the most important. West Orange High School allows five non-chargeable absences in a student's junior year and an additional five during their senior year for college visits. For upcoming college visits and opportunities, please check the individual college's websites. In addition, this slide provides links to explore a variety of virtual campus tours. The National Association for College Admission Counseling is hosting virtual college fairs on various dates this year. They will also be hosting an in-person college fair in April at the Meadowlands. Registration links are included in these slides. College representatives visit West Orange High School throughout the school year during the school day. Students have a chance in their own school to meet face-to-face -face and ask specific questions they may have. This opportunity also provides the students with a specific contact at the college to whom they can reach out to at a later date. Students must pre-register for the college visits on Naviance. When choosing the right college, there are several factors to consider when looking for the right fit, such as size, cost, academics, atmosphere, location, distance from home. So where do we begin? Based on your specific criteria, both College Board and Naviance have search and match tools to find colleges that are a good fit. These are both great tools to use to begin your college search. Another factor to consider when doing your college search is to look at the student support services offered at each individual college. If your child receives accommodations through an IEP or 504 plan, they may be eligible to continue to receive accommodations on the college level. Level of service varies from college to college and most often more comprehensive programs typically have an additional fee. In addition, student athletes who plan on playing a sport at a division one or two college must register and academically clear by the NCAA eligibility center prior to their high school graduation. It is recommended that all student athletes register by the end of their junior year. It is also advised that the athlete have an open conversation with his or her coach to discuss which level realistically he or she could play on. This should be done prior to beginning your college search. So let's continue by talking about the college process. It is highly advised that you keep this process in perspective, that you work together as a family, that the student must take ownership to start early and meet all deadlines, and to meet with your counselor often. What do colleges look for? When evaluating applications, colleges consider many factors. The student's transcript, standardized test scores, which can be the SAT or ACT, the college essay, extracurricular activities, letters of recommendation, and supplemental portfolios. Over the next few slides, we will discuss each factor in much greater detail. A student's transcript is the most important document in the college application. Transcripts show all courses taken in grades 9 through 11 and notes honors and AP level courses. The final grade and credit earned for each course is also listed. The transcript also indicates the grade point average earned each year as well as the cumulative GPA earned in 9th through 11th. It is important to note that even though senior year courses and grades don't appear on the transcript, they matter. Colleges will look at senior schedule and grades to ensure students are taking a rigorous course of study all four years and consistently performing at the expected standards. 
West Orange High School GPA is a weighted 4.0 scale. Weighting is added for honors and AP level courses. The full GPA scale is linked in this slide. Cumulative GPA listed on the transcript is an average of all courses taken in grades 9 through 11. GPA also determines class rank. West Orange High School uses a decile rank system in which students are provided with their rank as a percentage of where students fall within the class rather than their exact rank. Rank is provided to students in the fall during their senior meetings. All colleges will accept either the SAT or ACT for college admissions. Juniors should plan to take one of each of these tests this spring and they are responsible to register themselves online. Students who receive free or reduced lunch are eligible for fee waivers to cover the cost of these exams and should contact their school counselor before registering to receive this information. Typically, after testing in the spring as juniors, many students will retest early in the fall, taking the time between to do test preparation to increase scores. There are also many colleges and universities that have a test optional policy, which means they do not require standardized testing for admissions. This list has grown even larger due to the pandemic. The full list of test optional institutions is linked in this slide. Colleges will accept the SAT or ACT and both tests have sections dedicated to math and English. It should be noted that there are some differences between the two exams. One of the biggest differences is that the ACT includes a science section. A full comparison of the test is broken down in this chart. It is recommended for students to take one of each test to see which one they are more successful with. Here is the registration website and upcoming test dates for the SAT. West Orange High School is scheduled to be a test site for March and June. Here is the registration website and upcoming test dates for the ACT. West Orange High School is scheduled to be a test site for June. Students will need to create an ACT account in order to register. Students who have approved accommodations here at West Orange High School may be eligible for accommodations on the SAT and or ACT. For more information, please contact your child's case manager or school counselor. After devoting time to research throughout the spring and summer, students should have a list of colleges finalized by September. It is recommended that students apply to a range of six to 10 colleges, including options that are safety, target, and reasonable reach. A safety school is where your scores and grades are above what this school typically accepts. A target school is one where your GPA and test scores are in line with what this school typically accepts. The majority of the schools you are applying to should fall within this category. Reasonable reach schools are ones where your GPA and test scores are slightly below what this school typically accepts. Though it may seem like a long time from now, college application deadlines will be here before you know it especially for students who will be applying early. Here is an overview of the deadline categories you can expect to see on a college application. Early decision. This is a binding agreement made when a student applies to one specific school, typically their top choice. Benefits may be an increased chance of acceptance by letting the school know that you are highly interested in them. The downside is, is that it is a binding agreement and you are obligated to attend and must withdraw any other regular decision college applications you've submitted prior to comparing your options. On the other hand, early action is non-binding. Students are able to apply to more than one college through early action and enjoy the perks of early decision without the restrictions of a binding agreement. Early decision and early action deadlines are typically November 1st, November 15th, or December 1st. Regular admissions is non-binding 
and the deadline is later than the early application period. Rolling admissions is when colleges review applications and render decisions as received rather than waiting for a final deadline to pass, reviewing all applications, and issuing all decisions on a designated day. Priority is applications where the deadline is recommended by from the school in order for applicants to receive the strongest consideration for acceptance into special programs or scholarship consideration. Students will typically apply to colleges on the school's website or by utilizing an application platform such as the Common Application. A productive summer will ensure a less stressful fall when school is in full swing and college applications are due at the same time. Here is some additional information about several popular application platforms used by many colleges. The Common Application. Approximately 800 colleges are members of the Common Application. This application helps you to save time from having to complete each college's individual application. There is no disadvantage to using this rather than the college's own application. This application typically becomes available around August 1st. If a school offers the option of using the Common Application, you are highly encouraged to use it. The Coalition Application is a college application platform similar to the Common Application and has approximately 150 member schools. You could click on the link in this slide for a list of schools that accept the Coalition Application. The Common Black College Application is a single application that allows students to apply to 60 HBCU schools with one application and a one-time $20 application fee. The full list of member schools is linked here. Now let's move on to talk about the components of the application. Students can expect to see the same requirements across all application platforms. On the application itself, students will be expected to complete personal information about themselves, their family, and their education. Other components of the application include the college essay, and or personal statement and an activities resume. Some colleges require students to complete a self-reported academic record. Also, certain programs may require a portfolio of your work or an audition. It is important to review the application checklist for all colleges that you are applying to in order to ensure that you submit a completed application and that all required school documents are received. Colleges will typically not review an application or render in a decision until all required pieces are received. Your college essay reveals something important about you that your grades and test scores can, your personality. It can give admissions a sense of who you are as well as showcasing your writing skills. It is recommended that you start early and write several drafts. Summer is a great time to get started. Please make sure that you have at least one other person edit your essay. There are links on this slide to give you some ideas about college writing essays. A resume is a one-page compilation of your activities while you've been in high school. Use it to market yourself to colleges by showcasing sports, clubs, activities, employment, community service, summer programs, and honors and awards. Consistent involvement is key. Remember, quality over quantity. Next is letters of recommendation. It is important to start considering which teachers you would like to request to write your letters of recommendation. Before the end of your junior year, you should ask two teachers personally if they will write you a letter of recommendation. You will need to complete the survey for letters of recommendation under the important to do's and tasks section in Naviance as soon as possible. In senior year, following your senior meeting in September, you will follow up with the teachers you requested to write your letters and also put a formal request into Naviance. 
seniors will receive a recommendation from their school counselor in addition to their two teacher letters. Many students apply for financial aid to assist in paying for college. Financial aid includes grants, work study, and student loans. A grant is a form of financial aid that doesn't have to be repaid. The federal Pell Grant is available for use at all colleges, while the New Jersey TAG Grant is only available for use at in-state colleges. The federal work-study program allows you to earn money to pay for school by working a part-time job. Student loans are borrowed money that must be repaid along with the interest that accrues. The financial application is called FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. Even though students are applying for financial aid, the application process relies on financial information from a parent and or guardian. So it is important to work together to ensure that the FAFSA is completed as soon as possible. The FAFSA application opens up on October 1st of each year and asks for tax return information. The FAFSA application is linked in this slide. After you submit your FAFSA, your information is sent to the colleges that you are applying to. Each college will create a separate financial aid package for you based on your family's financial information and the cost of the school. It is important to compare financial aid packages between schools to consider the financial impact of your college options. In addition to federal student aid, New Jersey offers state aid through HESA, including programs such as New Jersey STARS and EOF. More information about the federal and state financial aid programs are linked on this slide. In addition to the FAFSA, some colleges require an additional financial aid application known as the CSS profile. The list of colleges that require this profile is available at the link on this slide. For more detailed information about financial aid, West Orange High School also hosts two financial aid workshops in the fall. In addition to financial aid, there are typically two kinds of scholarships, institutional merit-based and private. Institutional merit-based scholarships are issued by the college or university directly to the student based on academic performance and typically do not consider financial need. These types of scholarships do not have a separate application and are usually awarded in the acceptance letter. Private or independent organizations also offer scholarships based on a wide range of various factors, including financial need, academic performance, essay writing, community service, etc. Students can apply to these scholarships in their senior year. West Orange High School has a Google Classroom dedicated to scholarship and also provides a library of scholarships in Naviance. Students and parents are informed of scholarship opportunities through Google Classroom, Naviance, and the Guidance Newsletter. One scholarship application for West Orange High School students that they should look out for is the West Orange Scholarship Fund, which is available in February of senior year. The college application process is a collaboration of shared responsibilities for students, their family, and the school counselor. Students will carry a large amount of responsibility in this process, including monitoring deadlines, writing essays, submitting applications, and transcript request forms on time, sending test scores if required, following through with teacher recommendations, completing the FAFSA and other financial aid documents, applying for scholarships, and making sure social media accounts are appropriate. The school counselor is responsible for submitting required school documents to colleges for students, including transcripts, secondary school report, counselor letter of recommendation, teacher letter of recommendations, the West Orange High School school profile, and any fee waivers if eligible. Counselors are also available to assist students with the college application process every step of the way. Good luck.
In early February, the school counselors will be meeting with their 11th grade students to select their courses for senior year. Prior to the meeting, all students have been asked to visit the West Orange scheduling website to review the course list and complete and submit the course selection form prior to the meeting. Graduation requirements will be reviewed and students will be encouraged to continue taking challenging academic courses in their senior year. Colleges do see a student senior schedule and offer consider fall grades before making an admissions decision. In March, all juniors will be required to participate in mandatory state testing. More information about testing will be forthcoming. Your child's school counselor is available for a follow-up conference to answer any questions or to discuss your child's individual plans. Please reach out to schedule an appointment. At this time, the school counselors will be addressing your questions that have been entered into the Q&A box. Thank you. Um, as you can see, there's quite a bit of information um, that uh, families should be aware of, um, and it can be overwhelming. The school counselors are there to support, lead, and guide you through that process. Joining us this evening is uh, Mrs. Fahey. She's a counselor at the um, high school. Mr. Palanti, who's a counselor at the high school, and Mrs. Fury who's not only a counselor at the high school, but she's the voice behind the presentation. <laughs> and we thank you for that. At this time, uh, we would like to address any questions or concerns that you may have. If you do have any questions or concerns, please place them in the Q&A and we will uh, respond to them. The presentation for this evening will be available on the district website, on Naviance, and, and in um, our students' Google um, Classroom. We will share it with them there as well. The PowerPoint as well as a recording of the presentation will both be available to um, our families. Uh, tomorrow they will be posted on the district website via Naviance and also Google Classroom. We have also provided the link to the presentation in the um, chat. So if I may speak, hi, my name is Catherine Fury and we had a few questions in the chat in regards to students or parents concerned with perhaps their child's GPA being around a 2.5 and somewhere around there, uh, asking if they would um, have chances of getting into a school. And most cer certainly they will, but it's very important. And that's why when we meet with our students each year, we give them a copy of their transcript, which indicates their GPA. We show them how GPA is factored and um, calculated every year and why it's so important to do so well. Now, with that being said, when we met with, when we met with our juniors um, in the beginning of this year, in addition to working with them on scheduling, um, they still have this entire year to improve upon their, their grades, which will over, you know, if they do very well in their junior year, will hopefully boost that GPA up. Um, please keep in mind also, they've gone through a challenging two, the past two years with the pandemic and so forth. And colleges are aware that sometimes, you know, the learning environment might have not been ideal. Um, and they can express that or they can explain that through their college application, whether it be the, through their personal statement or something that the counselor might share in their letter of recommendation. But it's really important that if they want to have the most available options for themselves, that they really focus on this year and put a prior, you know, a priority into finishing out this year the best they can. So there's a, I'm Mr. Palante, I'm one of the counselors. Um, <clears throat> there's a question, how many AP classes would be considered rigorous for senior year without being overwhelming? And I mean, I would say it really, you know, it depends on on your student. Um, you know, as you may or may not know, AP classes are college level classes taught at the high school level. So they are very rigorous. The AP testing schedule, as the video said, is May. So you, the way you got to think about it, you are students are responsible for a lot more material in less time. Um, so, you know, we have students who take a handful of students who take three or four AP classes as seniors. Um, I would say that's more 
Um, it's more out of the ordinary than the norm. Students who take AP courses, usually one or two, you know, to really, you know, not only go for those college credits that they get through the AP test, but to show college that they are challenging themselves and taking as rigor rigorous a schedule as possible. Um, I think, would, you know, at least, you know, if they can get the recommendations for the AP classes, that will help them. Uh, the other thing I usually recommend to my students is any AP class has a summer assignment. So typically, I suggest the student, if they are debating, should they do the AP class, can they handle it or not, to really look over the summer before the class starts at the summer assignment. And if the summer assignment seems to be, you know, out of just way too much for them, or it seems like it's going to be, you know, a huge load of work, then they may want to reconsider if that's if it, if it is going to be that rigorous. And if you're talking about taking three or four AP classes, you know, all those summer assignments, if that itself is overwhelming, then maybe that may be, you know, it's, as the person asked, a little too rigorous. And please keep in mind, just to piggyback on what Mr. Palante said, students should be taking AP uh, classes for the right reasons. It doesn't mean that if you didn't take an AP class in high school that you don't have a chance to get into a good college. Um, as long as you're taking challenging courses in areas that you have interest in. I find it funny when I have a student say, I'm going to take, I'm going to take AP US history. And I ask them, well, do you even like history? No, no, no. I just want to take AP. Well, that's really not the right reason because some of these AP classes, you're looking at one to two hours an evening of reading or independent studying and so forth. So you have to be very invested in, you know, what you're learning within that area. And I'm sorry, Ron, let me just say one thing real quick. And it's not just for APs, for honors classes as well. I have lots of students come to me and say, well, I want to take as many honors as possible because that looks good. And I say, that's great if you can handle that. Because if you, and what I want them to understand, I want parents to understand, when you talk about the math of it, getting an A in a college prep class is going to help your GPA actually more than getting like a B minus in an honors course. And a lot of students think, and I show them there's a chart that I think is linked in <clears throat> in that in the PowerPoint to show you the, the, the scale of how the GPA works. And students think, well, if I get a C in honors course, that's as good as getting a B in a regular course or a college prep course. And the reality is, no, it's not. Mathematically, you get less GPA points for a C in an honors course than you do for a B plus in a college prep course. So I usually tell them, you know, and aesthetically, colleges like don't like to see Cs, even if it's an honors course. So I tell them a lot of times, I prefer you to stick in a class. I'd rather get the A's and B's than get a C in an honors course and say, well, it was an honors course, so it's okay. Um, there's a question, do um, students get help from school to write their essay? Um, yes, they do. During their senior year, the uh, uh, fall of their senior year, um, their um, Teachers are, that's one of their assignments that they complete in their class. Um, also, we have a writing lab that is uh, taking place after school. It started this week, as a matter of fact. They meet almost every day. And during that writing lab, there's um, individuals there, teachers that are available to assist students with writing essays or any um, type of writing assignment. So we encourage the students to take um, advantage of those opportunities. Throughout the school year, there's also opportunities uh, for uh, various writing labs and writing opportunities to um, assist um, students. Uh, someone else has said, well, are school counselors available to assist students with creating a timeline of milestones to help them manage the tasks required for college admissions? Absolutely. That is part of the role of the school counselors is to lead and guide the uh, students through that process. But um, the um, counselors will be meeting with the students to kind of map that plan out for them, what it will look like and what they need to do in order to meet um, the complete the various tasks that are required through the college um, application process. And with that meeting, um, someone on the online has asked, can par parents participate in that um, junior conference? Absolutely. Parents can participate in a junior conference. They should reach out to the school counselors, to the assigned school counselor to arrange a date and time to um, for that meeting to take place. Also, just as a follow-up, early on within the first two weeks of the school year, 
So really a lot of junior year is planning, looking at when you're going to be taking your standardized test scores, doing some research with some schools, going on some visits, something I find very, very valuable in the process. In the beginning of the school year, we meet with all of our seniors individually in small groups. So I would be meeting with students who just have me um, as their counselor. And at that point, we go through what they, we call it the senior checklist. And what we do is we provide them actually with a checklist of every step of what they need to be doing and when. What we tell students, if they follow that checklist, they will not miss a beat. Um, sometimes we have to encourage them to look at it. You know, they're, they're reaching out and, you know, this is a process where there's a lot of steps. So it's something that they kind of have to take ownership of. And we are here to help them. I mean, I, I wouldn't want a student to be sitting at home pondering, am I doing this correctly? Am I not? When I've done this over and over a thousand times. So I tell them, use me as your resource, but make sure that, you know, Step number one, read my emails, <laughs> read the things that I post on my Google Classroom. And I try to tell them that I'm not sending them emails because I'm bored and I have nothing to do with my time. Mm -hmm. Typically, when I'm sending them information or posting it in my classroom, it's to help them with the process. So if anything, I can encourage you as parents to please reinforce, to read their school emails, to check their Google Classrooms when the counselor posts something, because it is very valuable information. Someone asked, when are the SATs being offered at West Orange High School? We offer the SAT, it's in the um, presentation, the March administration and the June administration. So we offer the, the test on both those days at the high school. Somebody's asking, <clears throat> since most colleges are going to be test optional, would it be recommended to skip the SAT or the ACT? I kind of would say the opposite. Um, because honestly, given the landscape of how everything is right now, we kind of don't know when your children are going to be seniors, if SATs are going to be required or not, right? Um, some schools that have always required SATs are not, are waiving them this year. Might they go back to requiring them this year, next year or not? I, at this point, I don't know that I could say for every single school. So until you or your child knows the colleges that they're applying to, my, my usual advice is I'd rather you take it and not need it than not take it and need it or need it, you know what I mean? So the way I would look at it is I recommend students to take the SATs or the ACTs or, or ultimately both if, if it's option, if it's available, which again, it was, it has, it's been difficult to have it be available over the past two years, obviously, but as things are getting back to normal, hopefully, and it's available, we would recommend, or I would recommend students take the SAT, you know, because if there's like it said in the presentation, if you're applying to six to 10 schools, even if two of those 10 schools require the SAT, if you don't submit your scores, then they're not going to consider your application. So unless you know for a fact that every school you're applying to does not require the SATs, it just makes more sense from our perspective to, to have it, whether you need it or not. Also, um, the SAT, your SAT and your ACT score can be used to meet your currently, it can be used to meet the current um, state assessment. Um, there's a, a state assessment requirement that students need to meet in order to meet graduation requirements. And currently they can, um, they SAT and ACT scores are an option. So another question was how significant are senior year grades to college applications? I would say more so than ever, especially because a lot of schools have gone test optional. With the, with the original documents that we submit to the colleges, it does include the courses that the child is taking their senior year. And I would say in the last two to three years, I have seen a big increase in the amount of colleges reaching out to myself to say, we are reviewing so-and-so's application. Can you please um, email me their first marking period grades. Can you please email me their mid-year grades? So it is important that they continue to take a rigorous senior year and to also keep their grades up, not saying to get senioritis in the spring, but especially the first and second marking period. I, I see a question here saying, um, what should juniors be doing right now to prepare for the SAT? 
I'm not sure if that was answered yet, but the number one thing is keep your grades up and be involved and do your research to see which colleges you're interested in visiting and ultimately applying to. There's a question. Should letters recommendation come from core subject teachers? Would coaches count as a teacher rec? Um, you know, there are some, a handful of schools that specifically require a math teacher or a science teacher. Um, so as your child does their research, they can maybe find that. But generally what we would recommend or what I would recommend is that you want to find the people who know you the best are going to write the best letters recommendation for you. So that may be a coach. I mean, if the coach, especially if the coach is a teacher at, at the school, just because he is not your child's teacher for one of the subjects or a core subject, they can still write letters of recommendation. We have a lot of coaches write letters, um, you know, a lot of other uh, extracurricular activity advisors write letters of recommendation um, because they work with your child for more than just one class. A lot of times they work with them for obviously one, two, three, or even all four years. So in a letter of recommendation, you know, the way I usually try to say it is you got to think the, the admissions counselors at the colleges are reading a lot of, a lot of, a lot of letters of recommendation. So you want people who are going to write letters that really show that they know your children and that the child, you know, um, is confident that they're going to write a good letter about them. And usually that does come very well, can come from teachers, coach, I mean, from coaches, from advisors, um, you know, those types of people. But again, it also it varies from school to school because some teachers, some schools will say they want specific academic teachers. Some, depending on your major, if you're going to engineering, they want a math um, or a science physics teacher. So it varies from school to school. Another question is, um, what is the cut score you need on the SAT or the ACT to meet the graduation requirement? And we have that posted on our website as it's updated from the state. Uh, when should students reach out to teachers for letters of recommendation? Uh, generally, uh, we always encourage the students your junior, junior year or, or right at the beginning of your senior year. Um, you can certainly reach out to teachers and request those letters of recommendation. Know that uh, during the uh, senior year, teachers are inundated, certain teachers, with um, a letters, request to write letters of recommendation. So we encourage the students to reach out to the teachers sooner than later. Reach out to teachers who are, um, as Mr. Pallanti said, is very familiar with you, um, who know you. Um, not necessarily that teacher that you currently have a perfect score in that class. It may be a teacher that can um, uh, talk a little bit about your growth, how the changes that they have seen you go through, um, the accomplishments that you have made. Um, they may have um, seen you um, struggle a little bit, but then as time went on, how you persevered. So um, choosing that right teacher um, is important and do it sooner than later. So, uh, there's a, there's a question in the Q and a, um, Ms. Butler, I'm going to uh, toss it to you because, uh, it hasn't been addressed yet. Have you seen how colleges have responded to applicants who truly locked down during COVID and didn't participate in as many activities? Um, Many colleges um, are understand um, the um, struggles or the um, obstacles that students were up against. Um, they were up against during the lockdown, during COVID. Um, they have uh, been very um, uh, receptive to um, the information that the, the student shares with them. Um, they have, they, they're very much um, receptive to that. Um, they understand and very understanding. They understand themselves because they haven't been able to have visits and open houses and they've been, you know, shut down. So they're, they're understanding that students haven't been able to be as involved, you know, with activities based on our last few years. They can also show interest in schools by getting on their social media pages and following them and different 
things, you know, to show interest in the schools. And um, some programs, they can even participate, like some activities online from home during this time. You know, there are some clubs that will meet virtual. We have a question. Do you recommend working with an outside college advisor? Um, no. Uh, we have some of the best um, school counselors here at West Orange High School who are very committed and familiar with the college application process. And they're there to lead and guide your children through that process. Um, so I would say reach out to the school counselors, reach out to myself, and we're there to lead and guide you through that process. Someone have, has asked about um, college search uh, websites. Um, that information, we have included it in the um, presentation, those various links, and we will be sharing that information with you. So there are other um, um, sites that uh, we recommend that you take a look that provide uh, virtual, virtual tours as well. Any additional questions? I think we have answered most of the questions. Um, just looking. Yeah, we've answered most of the questions. Are there any other uh, final questions um, that you would like uh, the, still thinking about? So can I just, so there's a, a lot of questions about like, what's a good GPA? What is the average GPA needed? And I, I guess all I would say to that is it really, really depends on the schools, right? There are schools, there's a chart. I was trying to quickly look for it, but I, I can't find it on my computer here. The chart that we have of the 35 most popular schools that West Orange students apply to, and it's probably linked in the, in the, um, in the, in the slideshow, um, you know, with the average GPA from the West Orange students who have gotten into those schools. And it kind of runs all over the place. You know, typically I tell students, you kind of want to start at a 3.0, which is a B average, right? A lot of colleges are looking for that kind of 3.0 average. Doesn't mean if you have a 2.7, you can't get in. Cause again, we're all talking, we're talking about averages. However, there are schools that are more competitive, right? Because the other thing we, we need to consider is that we're not just in West Orange competing against West Orange students. When you apply to NYU or Boston College or University of Maryland, you're competing against not just others at West Orange, but you're competing against the whole country, right? So, you know, and, and the more competitive schools are gonna have higher GPAs, right? So if you look at the, the national averages for the Ivy League schools, they're probably in the high threes, if not four, high four GPAs based on different scales, okay? So it doesn't mean you can't get into any colleges. It just means, you know, the average, the GPA that you're looking for, that the college is looking for, depends on the colleges that you're looking at, which is why kind of bring it all back. You know, one of the biggest things we need, we ask everybody to do is start looking at the research, right? As a junior, you're going to start looking mm -hmm. at lists like the, like the, um, the slide show said, start thinking about the things that matter to you in college, then look at those schools. If you want to look at schools that are in New York, let's say you can do research, which schools are in New York and let me look at these schools and see what their average GPAs are. Right. So if my GPA is a 2.7 and every school on my list, the average GPA of students getting in is a 3.9, it's going to be tough to get in. Right. And, then, you know, that'll also like we'd said earlier, if, as a junior, if you have a 2.7, well, you need to, you know, you know what to shoot for. Right. If the schools I want are 3.5 and I have a 2.8, if I do really well as a junior, I can push my GPA up even higher. So it's, you know, I don't like when, other words, when people ask me, what's the best GPA I need or what's the best school I can get into? My answer is usually it's not like there's a list number one through number 3000 and you just plop right on that number. It's there's a really a lot of factors that go in. GPA is obviously one of them, but then the GPA is going to change to the average GPA, or the GPA you need, I guess is my answer, is going to change depending on the types of schools you're looking at. And also, is it a good fit for your child? You know, uh, one school, you know, I think sometimes we get so caught up in the name of the school that 
many families and students miss out on some wonderful institutions that could provide an excellent education for their child. Um, so it is important to do that research and to make those visits and connections because what might be a good fit for your friend or your neighbor might not be for your child. So, you know, you know your child, you know what type of learner they are, you know what type of environment works best for them. So use that when you're doing that research for them. Um, you know, you know if a school with 30,000 undergraduates will be will be overwhelming to them. Some students yeah. need a little more nurture and, you know, so, so those are the types of questions that you want to make sure that you're starting to think about, have those conversations with your child. And if you have any specific questions in regards to your child's um, plans to reach out to the counselor, to loop them in, because they could probably give you some um, valuable information as well. And I think that uh, Miss Fury, she answered that question. The last question that we have here is what if your child does not know what they want to study, making it difficult um, to college search. Um, it's okay. M many of us didn't know and probably still don't know what we want to do when we grow up or, or where we want to study, but um, there's a fit there for, for everyone. And I encourage uh, parents, I encourage students to take the time to sit down and talk to your school counselor. Um, they would be able to help you kind of sort things through. There are different um, 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 tests or career exploration opportunities that students have, and they're on Naviance that can kind of help them to begin to really think and, and hone in on what it is that they really want to do or what it, what it is that they're really interested in. So we encourage the students to take advantage of those various tools and opportunities that are um, included within Naviance. And your best source of information is that is your school counselor. Reach out to the school counselor. They'll lead and guide you through that, through those uncertain decisions. All right, I think we've an answered all the questions that were posted both in the chat and the Q&A. Um, as Ms. Butler said, the presentation was shared twice in the chat, but also will be on the district website, as will the video and a recording of this session. So we thank you so much for your time. We're happy to help you and uh, good luck with your college and career plans. Thank good you. Night. Good night. Good night. Good night.